Hello everybody, welcome back to more Dark Souls 2 with Flick the Mage. And you'll remember that last time we left off getting to the Bastille of whatever it's called. And I wanted to think about where to go next. So I'm going to do a little bit of talking about that as we go up here. I'm not going to be doing the Bastille next because as I was saying, it's a massive difficulty hike on the previous areas because you're not actually supposed to be here yet or you're not supposed to do this area next. I did on my melee character, it was bloody hard but I kind of forced my way through and I kind of sequence broke as a result and when I did eventually find the next kind of low-ish level area I steamrolled it because I was so bloody over leveled. So we're going to do this right and we're not going to do the Bastille yet. I did want to come here first just to point out that if you're after the, more of the Hilda Knights, Hyde Knights, whatever they're called, Knights, there's another one who sits here, he drops a, I think it's a pole arm or a spear. So if you're into that kind of weapon and you want a really good one, kill him and he'll drop it. He's pretty easy to kite back to here and kind of hang around here. He kind of resets himself if you fight him here-ish, if you put enough distance between you so you can kind of pick on him if you if you want to kill him cheesily. I'm not saying you should. Now the next area I think you're supposed to go to in terms of scaling difficulty properly involves 2,000 souls. So make sure you have at least 2,000 souls. And we're going back to Medulla. It involves that NPC who was selling miracles that I ran into after killing Dragon Rider. She, she hung around there for a little while, she offers you miracles and whatnot, and as I was saying in the part where I met her, she doesn't actually ever move to Medulla, she just moves to outside it. She still sells you miracles, but she also starts to offer another service once you meet her down here, where there was that contraption I pointed out that you can't operate, but she can. Oh, by the way, I did do some a little bit off screen leveling. Uh, I got myself another spell slot, so that's why I still have that spear barrage, even though it doesn't have enough uses to be useful, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so she's here. Also, I would like to point out, I don't know, maybe if you've already seen the previous parts, you will have pointed this out. Uh, and also to get it out of the way. It's been out in America for quite a few days now. It's not out in the EU yet. As I record this part, it will be by the time it's posted, but I'm in offline mode because the EU servers will not let me log in yet, annoyingly. So, the other thing I wanted to make clear, I got magic weapon in the previous part as well off my sorcerer and I didn't think I could use it because the longsword I'm using has flame element. Well, no, you can actually apply magic weapon to an elemental weapon in this one. So that is good to know, although you have to have it in your offhand and I like having my staff in my main hand. So I'm not going to use it for now. Anyway, I do also have access to pyromancy, but I'm trying not to rely on it because I always do. So anyway, speak to this lady. Oh, hello, I can't remember what her name is. An honor to see you again. This room is not as it seems. There are two, not one, pathways leading out. And only this lovely thing reveals the other path. And this, you lovely thing, only runs on miracles. Shall I provide you with one? So she does not provide the, the, the moving path thing for free. You have to pay 2,000 souls because she's a shyster. By the way, I'm not entirely sure what would happen if you then, if you'd killed her prior to this, because you can kill, you can kill most NPCs in these games. Uh, like, it, say, if you killed the Emerald Herald, you wouldn't be able to level up, and I assume that still applies, because in Demon Souls, if you killed the, whatever she was called in that, you couldn't level up afterwards. So if you kill her, there's no alternative way to get through to where this cave leads uh, from memory. In fact, I'm almost 100% sure there is no alternative route to get there. But anyway, yeah, you pay the 2,000 souls. Because you've already opened up bonfires through the other way, you never need to pay her again. Although if, for whatever reason, you did want her to move it, you have to pay the 2,000 souls again. There is another reason if you're playing a mage character in particular that you want to come this way. Oh, and I didn't remember this being so dark. Hmm. We should be fine. Yeah, there's another reason. If you're playing a mage character, it's well worth coming this way because we will meet our first hex vendor. I don't have enough souls to buy anything from him, but I think he's just at the top of this hill. Let me just... Make sure there's this is very dark, but I'm not going to bother wasting a flame butterfly because I'm pretty sure that we're safe from enemies for now. I'll get the sword out just in case. And we should just be able to get to the first bonfire of a brand new area to save us going back from Medulla if we should mess up and die. Uh, this should be safe. Yeah, this is fine. And he's up here on the right. So hexes are a bit weird, but I guess we'll wait and have a little explanation from this guy here who's staring at a blank wall for some reason. He's wearing some kind of... I can't get a good view of his face, but he's wearing a very strange shroud. I don't know who you are, but believe me, B. The frailty of the wind disrupts... Also, please excuse my dog barking and, you know, t 
talking over him. Now, is he actually ignoring me because I don't have a good enough stat yet? Oh, someone just knocked at my door, so I'm afraid there's going to be a break here, and then we'll pick this up in a second. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. You won't believe who was at the door. It was someone wanting to buy broken jewellery. It was like a cash for gold type person, you know the kind I mean, but they're going bloody door to door now. I cannot believe it. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Now, uh, I must not have done something or haven't done something yet that makes this guy talk to me because he doesn't want me to... In one thing, dark, you haven't the gift. Right, that is weird because when I spoke to him for the first time on my other character, he offered me hexes and I was after hexes because they're powerful. Hexes are dark magic related and they do more damage if you have souls which are expended as you cast. Now, obviously, because I did this in the wrong order on my other character and did the Bastille and stuff like that first, maybe there's something you do there that makes him receptive to you. So, hmm, okay, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, we're going into hu Huntsman's Copse. I keep on wanting to say corpse, so excuse me. Now, this is the first bonfire of the area. I don't think I've used any magic, have I? No, because I haven't fought anything yet. We'll, we'll rest anyway. But we're about to do some fighting. And I'm going to try and hold on to a little bit of... In fact, I don't need to hold on to a little bit of magic because I know that there's not actually many enemies between that bonfire and the next. You are introduced to a few new types of hollow in this next area, but they are just hollows, so, you know, they're nothing too fearful or nothing to be feared of, I guess. Now, after we kill this guy, the next hollow to appear is a new type that you should f always be very wary of. Now, let's see if I can see him without triggering him so I can talk about him before he attacks me. Let me just edge forward ever so slightly. You probably won't be able to see because it's so damn dark. Ah, damn it. No, you won't be able to. There's a hot... Oh, there he is. I want to try and trigger him attacking without... No, actually, that's not quite the right type. The type of those that look like them, they're just in their underwear and whatnot, but they don't have any weapons. They like to do flying leaps at you and then they explode. Very, very nasty. So you have to be very cautious about them. And I think given how dark the next area is, I am actually going to take my torch. It's one of the few areas in the game that's dark enough to warrant it. So we're going to do that, we're going to toggle. It means I can't really defend what I can... I can defend with the torch, but it doesn't offer very good physical defense. And we'll very cautiously start wandering through the copse. Now in this area there's a bunch of moth type things that spray poison down from the roofs. It's easy enough to just wait until they're not doing it and walk up. There we go. Yeah, it's easy enough to just wait for the gap between them doing it and then moving on, but because I'm a mage with lots of projectile spells, I want to get some revenge for my other character and murder their faces. Suck on that poisonous horribleness, although you just dropped an item and I'm no way getting that because it just fell into the abyss. There is another one. Where is it? There is definitely more than one. No? Hmm, maybe there is actually something down there. I never risked falling onto those mushrooms or anything like that. It doesn't look like it. Well, I think that's the item that dropped from the moth I killed. Oh, there's a moth there. So maybe there is something down there. I'm not entirely sure where that leads. But either way, we're not going down there yet. We're moving on. I know what I want to do, and then he is very clearly going to get up. But are you going to get up before I can hit you? No is the answer. Okay. It's actually worth holding on to your torch through this area because there's a very dark house coming up and lighting the torches permanently makes return trips a bit easier. Right, a little bit of explanation and minor spoilers for what I'll be doing in future parts, but up there is a kind of coliseum. It's called Undead Purgatory. There is a boss there and it's an entirely optional boss. And the only reason you want to kill it, other than, I guess, for getting the unique soul, is that uh, he blocks the way to a PvP focused covenant. So if you're after PvP focused covenant, that's where you want to go. Um, and also if you want the achievement slash trophy for joining every covenant, you have to go do that. I will do it eventually anyway because I think it's quite a funky boss. It's one of the gimmicky bosses of the game. You also get invaded by an NPC when you try and approach it and the way is guarded up there by many, many, many strong monsters that are very actually pretty damn good to farm for souls later on. <clears throat> so I'll probably be doing that, but definitely not strong enough to tackle that area yet. You ju you're just kind of passing through this area, you're not exploring everything it has. I ran in there by the way to trigger him, because he's hiding on the left, but then archers across the way fire at you, and they're deliberately trying to get you to 
they're trying to goad you into like maybe jumping off, etc. Because there's a big hole in the middle of the room, which you'll die if you fall into. Which you'll die. You will die if you fall into it. That's what I meant to say. Uh, we can safely fall here though. And I'll just quickly light this. So even if I die, I forgot that you still take damage. Oh, why did my? I'm not entirely sure why my lock-on failed there. It kind of made me face the wall. Uh, well, luckily it's only the basic hollows that have decided to play. The archers are still shooting at me, but they're not doing enough to worry me. If you get close to the archers, they pull out two daggers. And they can do a flurry attack that is reasonably damaging. And I just got a text message, because apparently this is one of those days where I can't get peace to record. Still. Let's see what we can do. I may have to cut this part a bit short as a result, I think that text message was telling me I'm about to have company. But we'll see. We'll make this... I, I do want to get to the next bonfire for sure. It's not far away. It opens up a whole new area with a lot of stuff we can do. The next boss isn't quite close enough if I want to make sure I go out my way to open up shortcuts. It'll take me a little bit longer than I expected. Or was planning anyway. I forgot about having to search the mansion and whatnot. Uh, also, if you come over this side, you do have to go around and drop down because you can't actually get back up that far side without going up onto the roof of the building. It's worth it though because I think there's items up here, but let's see. It's really weird that your torch goes out when you're climbing ladders. I keep forgetting, and I know that this exists, you can actually fast climb, which is weird. Oh, I didn't even see you. You hit me with a club. I'll hit you a sword. Okay, no I won't. That was quite a good combo, well done, but you're still dead. And since I know a bonfire is coming up, I have no problem with using Estus rather than life gems. And another guy jumps down, or where are you? you there is another guy here for sure. I think he actually dropped... Oh, there he is. I thought he dropped down, but no, he just does a flying leap. Right, there wasn't actually any items up here, so you do just come up here purely to get back around. So that you can enter the mansion again. Oh no, 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 there was an item. Poison Moss and Life Gem. You can get poisoned in this area by the moths, so I suppose that is worth it. Look at the falling damage I just took, that is ridiculous. You may want to, rather early on, save up the 20 grand or whatever it is you need to buy the, the ring that reduces falling damage from the talking cat back in Majula. It's really handy. And I just got a third text message. Can you believe... I really am going to have to cut this one short and I can only apologise. But, you know, a lot of the parts have been over half an hour, so... Oh, that was a Twitter message. <sighs> you know, being popular is a pain in the ass. And I was being sarcastic there. I am certainly not popular. Right. The next bonfire is actually just down this ladder, but I want to trigger him first because I can't remember what he's guarding. Okay, thank you very much. You gave me some throwing knives and you guarded a... Oh, another cracked red eye orb. So if you're after invasions, there you go. Now this next area, I can't really get a good camera angle of it, I apologise. It's very sprawling, it's very dark, and there's a lot to do. It's definitely going to take me longer than I have now, unfortunately, given those text messages I've gotten. So, this is going to be a very quick-ish part. It's probably not going to be the only video I do up tonight, at, as, a, as a sorry. <laughs> but there's the next bonfire I wanted. We're going to be exploring this area next, and we're going to be clearing it. We're going to be opening up at least one shortcut, maybe two. And then we're going to fight the next boss. A boss that I didn't have much practice on on my melee character because I did it first try. Because I was ridiculously over leveled because it took me so long to find out how to get to this area. And there's a lot of dangerous enemies in this area. Very good farming once you're high enough level though. So yeah, I apologise for this part being so short. I have to cut it short because I've just been given a message that's important. Also, shortcut to get back from the mansion side. Totally forgot that as well. There will be another video up tonight of some variety. Might not be another Dark Souls one yet, but we'll see. So yes, thank you for watching. There is more to come. Don't worry, if you feel cheated, there is something else coming. And there's certainly more Dark Souls. I'll make sure that the next video is extra long. I, I will try and fit in a lot in the next one to make up for it. Thank you for watching. And ta-ta for now.